Hello and welcome back to Jurassic World Evolution 2 and we are touring the Biogen Park which we built over the last few weeks. So let's get started. So we have the research compound here which serves as our entranceway, well the control centre serves more of our entranceway with a convenient uh, monorail station with a fountain next to it. We have our first set of amenities for steaks, lattes and some designer goods along with a lab tour so you can see how we make all the dinosaurs and the hatchery next to it. Around here we have a toilet with a emergency shelter, emergency shelter with a hotel. <clears throat> so let's go into this viewing gallery and we can see if we can see our first creature which is the Dimetrodon which if we recall in the first episode were trying to drown themselves and as you can see they are currently going into the bush to uh, get out of the sun and they're coming down from the forest area Maybe they're hungry, maybe they've just had enough of being enclosed and when they get sailed deep in this water, we'll come back and check on them shortly. <clears throat> so the uh, general law behind this park build is after the events of Jurassic Park back in 1987, 1993, depending on if you're going by book slash film, uh, InGen were brought out by, Bio, uh, by Biosim and with their combined resources they made this new park. And in this enclosure we have the Wahuhasaurus which are retreating back into the trees. Everything is retreating back into the trees so let's go and go in deep and see them. They all seem to be hanging around the, the perimeter at this moment in time. Maybe they are not hungry. They are not hungry. They are doing fine. <laughs> and as a result of the merger, if we look in this enclosure, we have the Indominus Rex. Which, arguably, because of uh, the research by Biosim in the... Jurassic World franchise is the reason why she's here. This is what Dr. Wu was uh, asked to make. And then he made the Indoraptor. <laughs> so we have one Indominus Rex in this large central enclosure. She seems very happy in here. Just. We do have a tower down here. But you can't really see into the enclosure. There's too many trees. So it wasn't uh, the most... Strategic build, but or placement, but it's uh, it's another area to view in, even though we can't see anything. Uh, in this enclosure, we have our Dilophosaurus, which are all hanging around here, feeding, getting a sense of togetherness, socializing, threatening each other, sleeping, hopefully they have needs in each other. And uh, as you see they have a bit of like a, a pride rock kind of theme going, even though I don't think they can actually walk on those rocks. That'd be a really good idea to do in Avery's. If you could do something like that in an Avery. But you can't build high enough. Uh, in this second section. We have more guest facilities. With a ruffle. Smoothies. Dinosaur adoptions. For the tour. Ride will be about to go on. Which will take the bulk of this video. I imagine it's going to be a very long tour along with an arcade and another hotel and another and the second monorail station uh, we will actually go to the lagoon at this moment 
to see if we can see some Mosasaurs. <laughs> Which we can't see at this moment in time. Oh, she's over there. I imagine both of them are over there. Uh, if we lower it, maybe we can get a few under the water when it... Hmm. Maybe not. But maybe she might be coming to grab a shark, but... Not yet. Oh, maybe she's she's coming to get a shark. Is she gonna dive? Yeah. Or maybe she's not. We get we missed that? Nope. Almost. Ah, there's both of them. Just below the surface. I'm sure she's probably going to that one now to feed. Do you need to feed? Nope. And no. Or dive in with them. Briefly. And we will now go on a very long gyrospear ride. So, let's ride it. There's... Uh, the gyrosphere goes through three enclosures, our large herbivore enclosure, which we'll be entering first, uh, the megalosaurus, and I think you can also see the coelophysis, I don't know if it goes, I can't remember if it goes through the coelophysis, but we might be able to see them as we come back through. So, in this very large enclosure, we have our Parasloppus, uh, Dreadnoughtus, Cynoceratops, Stegosaurus. Yeah, Stegosaurus, Sticky Morlock, uh, Gallimimus, I believe. I've be and, oh. Ankylosaurus as well. I've had to turn off the cohabitation in this build because uh, I was hoping the Stegosaurus would stay down the far end of the tour, but they decided to come charging up here. And the Cynoceratops didn't stand a chance. As you can see, they're just around this ridge. Many guests will see a dinosaur moving around its enclosure. And there's the Dilophosaurus. In fact, this is a common territorial process of great importance to the dinosaurs, as they acclimatized to life here at the park. More Dilophosaurus and Iguanodon as well. We have an Iguanodon roaming around the Stegosaurus and the Gallimimus just standing in the middle of the road like she owns the place. We do have uh, about three or four towers in this enclosure to get a, a bird's eye view. Unless you do one dinosaur ten minutes and they don't. Even though you turn the aggression way up. We coming round here. More Gallimimus. Another Dreadnoughtus going for something to eat. I thought maybe she might be going for a drink, but Nope. Amazing machine made possible by science. Your safety 
is our main concern, which is why you are behind our invisible barrier system. Invisible barrier, but they wander right through it and stand in the road. In front of us seems to be another Dreadnoughtus crossing the road. <clears throat> oh, maybe not. Just in front of the road. Iguana done. Interesting. More Stegosaurus. There's the Ankylosaurus coming out of the uh, the Paleo trees. Yet to see a sticky Morlock. Another Ankylosaurus. Having a good time? I'm sure you are. What? What's over there? There's nothing. Look over there. That's where they are. I'm pointing. There. There's a Gallimimus. An Iguanodon. No, I will not smell your finger. Stop putting it in front of me. Look for a sticky Morlock. You may well witness dinosaurs attempting to establish dominance while you were on this tour. While it can be worrying and distressing to witness, these standoffs are vitally important to the way these animals select an outcome. Dude, seriously, put the finger down. And wear a mask. JK. What? Well, yes, yeah, a tree. Do you want to point anything else out? Do you want to point out another tree? Yep, yep, yeah, that's a tree. Are you wearing yours? Yes, you are. Good boy. So this pond's not in use. Yes, water. Different. We'll have to just have a quick look around for the sticky Morlock. We didn't see one on this tour, but we did get to see the other species here. <clears throat> the gyroscopic technology will keep you upright at all times, so you've got nothing to worry about. This is where the Stegosaurs should have stayed, but decided not to. <clears throat> yes, tr trees. Snowstorms present a considerable hazard here at the park. The guests, staff, and animals. Should conditions worsen during your visit to the park, Please pay attention to the instructions communicated to you via our announcement system. Right. How come there how come there's snowstorms and there's no snow option on the on the brush? I wouldn't like to put some snow down to be fair. It's 
especially on the mountains. I think we're coming close to the next enclosure. You may well encounter some interruptions to our usual services while we attend to routine security measures, but we hope to keep any disruptions to a minimum. Minimum. I think we are crossing over now. Yeah, tree. Let's see some carnivores, eh? Rocks as well. So we should see some megalos around here shortly. Hopefully this chap will point them out to us. Well there's a goat. There's two goats. They're not Jurassic goats. Yep, that's where the goats come from. There's the Tyrannosaur enclosure. They must be in the trees as well. There they are, blocking the... Blocking the path. You didn't point that out, did you? No, they're right in front of us. Yep, definitely right in front of us. They're watching, they're sleeping. No, they're right there. And as we come around the side, hopefully we should see the see their voices. As we uh, leave the Megalo enclosure, hopefully they should be around some of the sides. We'll keep looking this way. We'll ignore the guy who keeps pointing at random stuff. Hopefully, well, he can't be wrong at this point. There they are. Coming down from the hillside. Hopefully as we get round we should get a better look. Excellent. The hollow limb bones of coelophysis help to make this opportunistic carnivore a nimble and tireless threat. Whether it chooses to hunt alone or as part of an exceptionally deadly battle. Okay, let's get out the tour and let's go look for some sticky Morlock. Now that would have been a view. And that guy could would have been pointing for ages and he would have been like correct every single time. Gallimimus, Gallimimus. And Kylo. Para para para. Right, satellite view.
Yes, I, I knew I put Sticky Morlock in here. Just chilling by the watering hole. Number one watering hole, number two, and then number three. Number four is with the Megalos. Following our uh, monorail station across the lagoon, we come to the third section, which uh, leads us to this enclosure, which leads to our Berathinosaurus, who are currently going up the hill, because they don't like being watched. Like hiding in the mist. Where's number one? She escaped. In the trees. And she's coming back down. Let's have a quick look. And she is having a little bit of a groom. Scratching the back of her ears. And we'll shoot around here where we have two more lagoon lookout points. The Mosasaurs seem to be over the other side still. And we also have another emergency emergency shelter and a restroom, followed by the Korean barbecue, bubble tea and hats in this circular courtyard where you can dine in the middle. And then the hotel is off the lagoon, so from your hotel room you can watch the Mosasaur feed. Uh, up on the hill we have a spa. With another emergency shelter, shelter, uh, restroom, uh, key rings, uh, ginger beer, and a another throffle, with uh, another large hotel for this area. In the A3, we have the Quetzalatus and also the Dimorphodon. It is also very loud in here, hence why I have to shout. But we do have a very colourful Quetzalotus. They do not sit on the rocks, they just tend to hang around and they are of course hardly fly anywhere. We just go down to the bottom section where hopefully it's a bit quieter. It's not. Uh, we don't have any more Dimorphodon. They all seem to be hanging around the top section. And you seem to be stuck. Uh, following this area, uh, we'll have to go into the uh, research points. So we'll go into this one, where we have the the Giganotosaurus. There are two Giganotosaurus in this enclosure: uh, the the film skin and then an InGen skin. Uh, but they are hiding in the trees because they like a lot of trees. Where's the other one? There we are. The classic, I should say, because it's been in the game for much longer, is the dominant force. So, take that dominion. And in this enclosure, Low down, we have some Velociraptors. We do have a Blue, we do have a Charlie, we do have an Echo. We don't have a Delta. And Charlie is the Alpha in this pack. 
There are ten raptors. There's two sections, this uh, beachy section, which has meat and goats, and then the more foresty, swampy section over here. And they seem to be sticking mostly to this area. There's our Alpha Echo. And they're not so Alpha Bloom. Our final enclosure is this one, which is the Tyrannosaurus, which are around here somewhere. Let's lower it. Hopefully, we won't get eaten. Over there. Again, through the trees. Uh, no film skins, I'm afraid. Just standard park skins. God, they're just. Everything loves the trees at the moment. And we haven't been able to see anything feed. The Giga and the T-Rexes are kept separate from this mountain uh, mountain section. And so are the raptors. The raptors are protected from this mountain as well. To finish off, will we get a Mosasaur feeding? Will we? Won't we? We won't. And that is the end of this part tour. Uh, please leave a like, comment and subscribe. Let me know which is either your favourite enclosure or your favourite dinosaur. And what would you like me to do next time? Uh, I'm... I'm not sure what to actually build next time. I'm going to have a bit of time to think about it and start planning it out. I guess I really need to decide what map I'm going to use. But until then, please leave a like, comment and subscribe. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Bye for now.